to my channel. I am Kayla. Most of you probably know me from my page, The Fit Mummy Diaries, my Instagram account, where I have basically documented the last couple of years of my life. It's seriously been about eight months since I posted, I'm pretty sure, my last YouTube video. So much has happened, as you guys know. If you watched my last video, my daughter was diagnosed with a very, very rare condition. Sacrocorgial <laughs> teratoma. I can never pronounce it. So, anyway, watch my last video for all the info that I found out when I was pregnant. Basically, the worst imaginable thing happened, and Valentina passed away when I was still pregnant with her, so she was stillborn. But I will go a bit in depth about everything that happened now. I might forget some things. And some things might not be exact timelines because I do suffer with really bad PTSD from everything that happened. I actually lost my life and I had to be brought back to life. So a lot, a lot happened. Anyway, I'm ready to talk about it and I do want to spread awareness about her condition because it was very rare. And the rare condition that I also developed during my pregnancy and after my pregnancy, which killed me. So... Basically, a couple of days after I filmed my last YouTube video, which was early December, I am pretty sure. I think I was about 22 weeks pregnant. I went into hospital and at this stage I was getting scanned every couple of days. So, went into hospital for my normal ultrasound and they basically told me, you're not, not going to be going home until you have this baby now. And, you know, that was when COVID was bad and that terrified me because I knew I wasn't going to be able to see my kids. What could have been weeks, months? We had no idea at that stage. So basically I was 22 weeks and I was measuring full term, like 40 plus weeks. My belly was huge. It was bruised. I had bursting blood vessels because of how big I was. Basically at that stage I've had polyhydramnios and I was anemic so that's kind of all I had at that stage and I had my cervix was shortening so I kept going into preterm labor which they had to keep stopping but basically I got admitted because I had to be on strict bed rest and at that stage I wasn't even allowed to walk around. I was getting bed baths so I was allowed to shower every 48 hours and I had a catheter in so I didn't have to get up to go to the toilet and this was just for my safety because my cervix went from 3.5 centimeters to 1.6 so the first procedure i had now this was after a couple of days i went into hospital i had a polyhydramnios drainage so what they did was pop some needles into my belly and drained the first time we drained three liters of fluid i'm pretty sure three liters of fluid which took so much pressure off me and at this stage baby girl was kind of stable like her liver and kidney, there were some issues there, but she was pretty stable. It was just more about getting me comfortable because I was so uncomfortable, I couldn't even walk. So yeah, I did that and then they checked my cervix the next day and it had shortened to 1.4 centimeters. So they told me that I should get a cervical stitch put in. So I got put to sleep for that because of how they had to do it because the tumor was pressing down like on my cervix so it had to be done very carefully and it would have been a bit painful so I was put to sleep for that they also couldn't put a spinal block in because of yeah the issues so put to sleep for that and got the stitch in so woke up everything was all good that went really well I was just spotting had a bit of pain at this stage I was on endonomorphine for pain because my pain was honestly I can't even explain it it was horrible so that after, I had the surgery in the morning and then that afternoon we had another scan. At this stage now I was getting scanned every 24 hours, sometimes twice a day. And they basically told me that I, Valentina, was going downhill. They were speaking to surgeons from RPA in Sydney, from overseas in, what was the hospital called? the Philadelphia Children's Hospital so over in America they were like corresponding there was another specialist in Melbourne so they were all talking they were all calling because obviously it is such a rare condition and yeah there's you know not much they can do while in utero well there wasn't I pushed and pushed and pushed them to try an in utero surgery it was something the type of surgery that she was having was something that had never been performed in Australia so I pushed them and pushed them because I knew if 
we didn't do it, she would 100% pass away. So after they were corresponding with a, a specialist over at the, it's called CHOP, C-H-O-P, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, they agreed that they would do the first, like first part of the surgery. Now this was a four part, four different in utero surgeries. So first part, and that was gonna happen the next day. So what they had to do was cut off the blood supply to the tumor. So what happened with this surgery was, so they were FaceTiming their specialists over in Philadelphia. They had specialists from Sydney come in while I was getting it done, specialists from Melbourne come in. So the room was full. They, so they gave me something to kind of calm me down, something like Valium, but it wasn't Valium, it was something that saved you in pregnancy. And basically I laid down, I had two separate people like having like ultrasound probes on my belly and then Professor Pinnell, which was my specialist, and the one from Melbourne and the one from Sydney all were watching. And basically they put a few needles in my belly, opened it up a little bit, and then there were there was a laser beam that zapped and there was another one that was injecting glue into the vessels of the tumour to stop the blood flow. Because at this stage, the tumour was about her size, maybe a little bit bigger. And that was a success, like it cut off about 60% of the blood, no, 70% of the blood supply in that one surgery. So that was incredible. She started stabilising a little bit after that. Um, now... 48 hours after that surgery, Valentina was having her first blood transfusion. So that was an in utero blood transfusion. So same kind of thing. They had to order the blood from Sydney. Blood came up from Sydney and then same kind of thing. A few needles into my womb through my, like through my abdominal wall. And then it was really scary. Oh, this is also what happened. So what they'd do first time, they'd put a needle into Valentina directly into her, which would put her to sleep. So it was must have been like a general anaesthetic or something. And then when she went to sleep, they would they put the um, needle directly into her main artery to her heart, and then they gave her her blood. So it was her first blood transfusion, which is insane that they could do that. Again, that was really that worked really well. And yeah, the tumor was sitting around the 70. So it, they cut off about 70 supply because what was happening, the tumor was taking blood from Valentina. Valentina was taking blood from me. I actually developed something called maternal mirror syndrome, which means my body was mimicking what was happening to Valentina's. So after the second surgery, which was, yeah, cut, um, her blood transfusion, her first blood transfusion, I developed, um, yeah, maternal mirror syndrome. So basically I had swelling on my brain, swelling in my heart. So um, fluid in my heart, fluid in my brain. My liver was about 12 times its normal size and my blood supply had dropped down to about 70% of its normal thing. And that's exactly what was happening to Valentina. So everything that was happening to Valentina, my body was mimicking. It's something, it's a very strange syndrome. It's really interesting if you guys want to look it up. So it's called maternal mirror syndrome. Then Valentina developed something called high drops, which is basically first stage of heart failure. And I was the same. I developed that as well. So things got pretty bad pretty quickly. The tumor had grown another couple of centimeters in one day, which was horrible. So they decided to do the second part of a blood transfusion. So. 48 hours later, which was, was it Christmas Day or Christmas Eve? I'm pretty sure it was Christmas Day. We did the, we did the second part of the blood transfusion, which, you know, put more blood into a body because they can't overload the blood. So it had to be done in two separate times. Went all well. She wasn't getting any better, but she wasn't getting any worse. And then two days after that, again, I had my, my second part of the, cutting off the blood supply to the tumor, which they did cut most of the supply. They left a little bit because they didn't want it to calcify because if it calcifies, it can turn cancerous. So they left a little bit of blood supply. Now that's when I started getting very, very sick. The next couple of days, I was basically dazed out. I was struggling to breathe. It hurt me to breathe. You know, everything was hurting like I knew like I knew that I was going to die. I just accepted it. Like I felt it in my body. I didn't tell anyone how sick I really was because 
I was, I knew that they'd deliver her and they basically told me if they delivered her at that stage she wouldn't make it and they wouldn't try to save her because she was too sick and I didn't want her to come out. I always said to myself, if she is going to pass away, I want her to pass away inside of me. I don't want her to be born so prematurely and, you know, get very, very sick. So, yeah, it was honestly the hardest time of my life, but... Anyway, so yeah, we did that surgery. Now, that was the last surgery at this stage. They were just kind of watching her, and she got very, very bad. Um, but then she'd get through it very good. And then on the 30th of December, I, I remember feeling her movements decrease a lot. They didn't decrease at first. They just felt different. I just had an overwhelming feeling that something was going to happen and basically yeah that was the sickest day I remember before having her then on the 31st so it was Christmas Christmas I mean New Year's Eve so it was New Year's Eve on the 31st and at this stage too they were checking with the Doppler every six hours and then asked me about my movements and they couldn't find her heartbeat and I just knew they kind of said, oh, you know, the tumour could be covering it, but I knew that it wasn't good because of how down. I just had a feeling, you know, if you know, you know, I believe in that stuff. I just knew something was wrong. And that was at about three o'clock in the morning on New Year's Eve. So worst day of my life. I'm so traumatised by that. But yeah, I basically had to call Tim. I couldn't get a hold of anyone because of the time in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. Got a hold of my mum first, then mum came over here and I got a hold of Tim just before mum got here, thank God. But um, basically, so it was the 1st of January in the morning, so technically it was the 1st of um, January, but she did pass away on the 31st, so New Year's Eve. Um, you know, my doctors all came in, we had a talk, I had to have a cesarean because of how big the tumour was. Now, Valentina was about this big, so tiny. The tumour was about this big. It was triple the size of her, it was insane. Um, I had to have a classical caesarean, which means it's up and down. So up and down and across. So mine was like a cross, and then I was cut hip to hip. So I have a massive incision hip to hip, which <laughs> is crazy, but um, Basically that day they figured out that I had also, so I had high drops, I had polyhydramnia, so I was anemic, I had maternal mirror syndrome and I had something called HELP syndrome which they think is actually what killed Valentina but it went undiagnosed because of all the other conditions I have and I did not blame them at all for that because I was so sick and there was so much going on, my body was giving up, they basically told me if Valentina didn't die that day and they looked into me for, didn't look into me further, I'd be dead because, you know, I was so sick and I was hiding from them how sick I was because I knew they kept saying that Valentina, my life was a priority over Valentina's and you know, you can't tell a mother that. So Valentina was born at three o'clock in the afternoon, classical caesarean. When I woke up, the pain was, I can't even explain the pain. I knew something was wrong, so basically, Woke up, couldn't keep my eyes open, and then, yeah, the pain. I couldn't breathe. I felt like there was stuff stuck in my lung. Like I could feel, I don't know, it was just, I can't even explain, but basically over the next couple of days, I also lost 2.9 litres of blood during my cesarean. Like they should have transfused me straight away considering I was already anemic. Like I only had... I lost about 60% of my total blood volume. So at this stage, how the fuck was I still alive? But, <laughs> well, um, basically, because my pain was so bad, I had about 20 kilos of fluid in my body that just from swelling, I couldn't move. I just remember, and this is where I kind of don't remember, but I remember parts of it. It's kind of starting to come back. I had, yeah, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't drink. I couldn't eat. It was just the weirdest pain and then I remember my chest just started burning and then I started vomiting but it wasn't normal vomit my they didn't realize my intestines and bowel paralyzed so I started vomiting vomiting up my feces I was vomiting up my own shit which was great it was green it was gross the most 
disgusting thing but basically after that I passed out and I went straight to ICU um, that's when my heart stopped because I had liver problems I had kidney problems my hemoglobin was 32 which is so freaking low I had drips all through my body but yeah anyway I was out for a minute and 40 seconds they brought me back um, I don't remember that the next couple of days but um yeah it was all my I got really bad after I delivered her and that often happens with help syndrome and maternal mirror syndrome but I just feel like there was other things that they didn't treat that they could have treated that made me sick I was had to drink this paste and they told me this is the first time they've ever had to give anyone this paste it was like this paste drink I can't even explain it it felt like I was drinking concrete it was just the most disgusting thing I have ever drank in my life. But basically they were on a big run. They had to get it transferred from another hospital because they couldn't find it. They're like, oh my God, we never had to use this. But yeah, it's just insane what everything that happened. Basically, they told me this was the most complex case they have ever dealt with. The most high risk, most complex case they've ever dealt with at John Hunter Hospital, which is insane because they have one of the biggest maternal fetal medicine units in Australia and for them to tell me that like it hurt but um you know I feel like they did everything right up until my delivery and after my delivery was just hell but I you know I didn't see my kids for seven weeks I spent seven weeks in hospital couldn't see my family because of COVID you know we got to spend a week with Valentina which was beautiful thanks to the cuddle cot you know that's incredible so we got a week with her um and it was beautiful we've got hundreds and hundreds of photos which i'm so thankful for we like had a ceremony and had her cremated which is beautiful so she's always with us but yeah basically i you know and my recovery was horrible i've had two surgeries since but i'll do that in another story time i just wanted to kind of educate you guys on you know the condition that she had and you know how hard it was for me and why I've been absent because it's just insane like what what we went through as a family last year it was just horrible but you know I finally accepted everything grief is a very hard thing and you know it comes in all different stages and it's to, it's been the most horrible thing I've ever had to go through and I still cry I cry most days I miss her more than anything and I think about what my life would have been if she was still here and that's the hardest thing it's all the what ifs but we you know I'm waiting to get my hysterectomy we have been given the all clear to try for another baby I only have a couple of months so you know I'm gonna try but if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen but basically that's my story that's Valentina's story um insane <laughs> like talking about it just it makes me emotional but yeah I've, that's why it's taken me so long because I wasn't ready to share the whole story but if you guys are over on my TikTok which is Kayla Ann Rose I post little snippets throughout my story my journey but I'm glad I've finally been able to share a bit more of it with you guys rather than, you know, quick Instagram stories or TikToks because obviously you can't go much in depth because you don't have much time on those. But I could have missed some things because obviously it is a very traumatizing topic and I'm some timelines may be wrong. But yeah, basically I had five surgeries, six surgeries while I was in hospital for that short time. Valentina was born at 27 weeks and she was beautiful and I did share photos over on my Instagram and you know I might edit the photos to show the tumor one day maybe in like a picture because it is very you know it is very graphic and traumatizing so but I do want to share something so I'm going to work out a way even if I do a sketch or something to show you guys but yeah it's just a very crazy very rare condition it will never happen to me again I have just the same chance of it happening with her like with her as I you know again so it's not gonna happen one in 50,000 which actually went up to one in 80,000 because hers was a little bit more rare um and it was cancerous so it did rupture in me and we had some issues with that as well so yeah the tumor ruptured during my cesarean as well but 
thanks for listening guys and I hope I brought you know some more awareness around this and you know we are continuing our lives now trying to move on it's obviously very hard and you know it is hard as a couple going through something so traumatizing because people grieve differently but I I'm gonna be a little bit more regular with the posting and I'd love for you guys to go have a look at some photos of Valentina I post a lot on my Instagram and yeah if you guys have any video suggestions down in the comments pop them down and I will try and get you know get back to everyone and yeah basically I'm gonna start documenting our new journey now so thanks for watching guys